Hi, I'm Dr. Kit Weathers, and once again, it's time for the root tip of the week. So let's get started. Now, last week's magic trick, we showed you how to take a packet of sweet and low and using static electricity, knock it over. Now, here's a perfect prelude to that. Reach over and get a few packets of sweet and low out of the little dispenser, and then just pick one of them and tear the corner off like this. Get rid of the corner and just turn it upside down and empty it into your fist. That's going to take a little doing to get it all out in your fist like this. And once you get all the sweet and low out, then you can drop the empty package on the table, give it a little blow, and the sweet and low has vanished. Now the solution to this is so simple you're not going to believe it. Let me show you how it works. To learn the secret to this and other magic tricks in this series, go to endorootcamp.com. Coming to you from the floor, I'm going to talk a little bit about apex locators, how we can locate those canals and find them with much more accuracy and a lot better. There's a lot of things that you should know about apex locators that the manufacturer doesn't tell you. And I'm going to tell you right now, so let's go get started. Now, there are a lot of apex locators on the market today, and you might wonder, how in the world can I choose which one to use? Well, let me show you how they work first, and then we'll talk more about that. After you make your access opening, all of the apex locators are the same. You have one lead that connects directly to the file that's going to go down in the canal itself, and another lead that goes to the lip. That completes a circuit into the apex locator, which basically is a glorified ohmmeter. And it calibrates itself so that it reads the resistance of the periodontal ligament and how far away from the periodontal ligament you are. And this is expressed with lights or with dials or uh, different methods. Most of the apex locators in the market are quite accurate, but the most accurate reading you'll get is when it actually reads apex at the end and we recommend subtracting one millimeter from that measurement. That's the only accurate way that you're going to get total apical measurements and get your apical length accurately so that all of your files will go to the perfect measurement. The apex locator that I've used for the past several years is the Mark VI from Miltex. Uh, and now, just recently, I've changed to the Mark VII which is another upgrade from that, but I'm going to show you the light colored one first to give you a couple of tips here. It comes with a little clip, and you can see it right here. That clip attaches to the patient's bib, and that way the apex locator is right here in full view, easy to locate. The thing, and of course it has the regular lip clips and the uh, clip that goes on the file, of course. But the thing that I like about this is it just has a series of lights, and when it reaches apex, the red light comes on at the bottom, and that tells you you are at the full apical length. Actually, it tells you you're slightly beyond the apical length because it's about half millimeter or millimeter out the end of the tooth when that light comes on and the buzzer sounds. So what I'm going to suggest you do is go down slowly until you see the red light that says apex, then make turn off the uh, apex locator, pull the file out, measure it, subtract one millimeter and that will get you back into the narrowest part of the canal. And that's going to be your most accurate reading. Now the new Mark 7 has a few more features on it that you might want to look at. Uh, by the way, both of these Apex locators are about half the price of the more expensive Root ZX and some of those Apex locators, so you might want to look at that. They're just as accurate, but they're a lot less money. This one has regular batteries in it. They can be rechargeable or just regular batteries, double A's and it, uh, it has a, a little bit better calibration circuit in it. The information is right here on your, uh, on your whatever we call this thing. So anyway, that's, that's all about apex locators for now. Uh, a couple other things that you should keep in mind if you're going to use your apex locator. If you have a problem with your apex locator, there's two things you want to look out for. Number one, make sure that the pulp chamber is completely dry. If it is not dry, you're going to get a crossover to other canals or maybe even it'll short circuit out against uh, one of maybe a metal uh, restoration or a crown or something like that. The other thing that you want to make sure to do is use the largest file that will go to the working length. 
If the needle is jumping around all over the place, that probably means the file is too small and it's not making good contact. So try a 15 or even a 20 if it'll go down in the larger canals and that will help you. Okay, I hope our tips today have given you a little better insight into how to use your apex locator and maybe which one you want to pick. Well, that's it for another Root Tip of the Week. I'm Dr. Kent Weathers inviting you to join me at our very next Root Camp. So long for now.